You think of the people he's worked with. Then you find the connection between them. And it leads you right to him. Sounds logical to me. What case are we talking about? Uh, not exactly a case. It's six degrees of Kevin Bacon. You try to get to Kevin Bacon from any actor in six steps or less. For example, start with Andy Garcia. Two steps. Andy Garcia was in The Untouchables with Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner was in JFK with Kevin Bacon. Huh. It's an excellent cognitive exercise for taking seemingly unassociated individuals and finding unexpected relationships. Quite helpful in solving cases. And at parties, I suppose, it's a way to meet women. I too. Try this one. Suzanne Summers to Kevin Bacon. I can do it. I can do it. Your neck hurts? Yeah, what's up? You've been rubbing it all morning. I must have just slept on it funny. Neck aches are often caused by pillows. You need goose down, not farm. Farm's a killer. Well, Sue is a kinesiology minor in college. Bet you could work out the kinks. Uh, so many remedies, so little time. Olive, what have you got? Has Bobby ever mentioned a guy named Mac Ellis too? Doesn't sound familiar. Why? Well, he called a while ago. Since Bobby is testifying in court, I took it. This guy said he and Bobby have a relationship in that he has information we can use. What kind of information? The kind that could lead us to Simon Hoffman. Well, that'd be nice if it were true, but nothing ever leads to Simon Hoffman. He's too careful. I thought, since Bobby's still tied up, I'd go ahead and meet with this guy, see what else he has to say. And I thought you might want to come with me. I could use some fresh air. Where are we going? Maryland Prison Center. He's an inmate there. I'm afraid there's been a misunderstanding. I asked to speak with Bobby Manning. I thought perhaps you could give us whatever information you have and we can pass it on to him. I suppose that'd be all right. And I'd hate for you to have made the trip for nothing. Why have we made this trip, Mr. Ellis? Simple business negotiation. You have something I need connections to shave a few years off my time in this fine establishment. And I have something you need. Information relating to the whereabouts and current activities of my old friend and former business associate, the elusive Simon Hoffman. I'm assuming that's a business you'd like to be in. It's a business we'd like to learn more about. <laughs> Pragmatic, very good. Perhaps it's just as well Bobby couldn't make it. I have a feeling he would have reacted more emotionally. It runs in the family. Do you know his family? I am family. I'm Bobby's father. <laughs> Never see the seven wonders That'll be alright Should my tender heart be broken I will cry those teardrops knowing I will be just fine Cause nothing changes Guys, shame you missed my testimony in court this morning. Good day for the court, good day for the FBI, good day for America. We need to talk to you. Okay. What's on your mind, Steve? Well, speak up. Can't be that bad. We met your father today. Don't see how that's possible. Pop lives in Australia. Talked to him last week. Not that father. Your biological father. He's a liar, a thief, a con man. And don't let me forget, an A-list explosive expert. Perhaps you've noticed that he's in prison. 
Yeah, well, there's about 17 reasons for that. More if you count the things they couldn't convict him of. I mean, look at the way he engineered this whole meeting. Withholding the fact that we're related so that he could use the element of surprise, right? To be in control. Bobby, your dad, Mac, gave us inside information about a job that he says Simon Hoffman put together. And you believed him? No, we didn't. That's why we checked out the information. There was a heist about a month ago. Some guys got away with about three million in South African gold. Yeah, hey, it's Kinsey's case. Right. Mac told us he knew where the gold was. Since the crooks couldn't exactly put the gold in a legitimate bank, they found a jeweler with a large vault, a small conscience, a love of fat service fees, and the ability to help them turn the gold into cash. We talked to Kinsey. He knows about the jeweler, and he believes Mac could very well be telling the truth. Yeah, right, I should pick up the gold and arrest the jeweler and Hoffman. What do you need Mac for? Hoffman wasn't in on the original heist. Mac got wind through a prison contact that Simon Hoffman is planning on stealing the stolen gold from the jeweler's vault. And they know Mac. So we spring Mac from prison to be our inside man. I'm telling you, don't do it. He can't be trusted. He won't be working alone. And he knows what will happen to him if he deviates from the plan even one iota. Bottom line, we need Simon Hoffman. And if Mac Ellis could give him to us, I want to use him. Do what you gotta do, but I want no part of it. Your father's in jail? You say that like it's a bad thing. I thought your father was in Australia. Hey, different father. Guys, back to business. We are after the crooks who are planning to steal the gold from the first set of crooks. Thieves stealing from thieves, what is the world coming to? Mac has an old friend already on the crew Simon Hoffman is putting together. We're going to have Mac contact said old friend and talk his way onto the job as their explosives expert. Then Jack will go in undercover as his assistant. The only wrinkle is Hoffman's crew has already contacted another explosives guy. How do we iron that wrinkle up? With the help of the DCPD. They're going to pick up the current explosives guy, leaving Hoffman with a need that Mac can conveniently fill. Then. When they pick up the gold and meet up with Hoffman, we take them all down. Any questions? Your father's really in prison. You might want to try signing it to him. Maybe that'll help him believe it. What? I, don't tell me you weren't all thinking the same thing. Do you have to work hard to be like you are, or is it a gift? I'm sorry, I thought I made myself clear. Bobby's involvement is part of the deal. If he's not in, neither am I. And if I'm not in, neither are you. Actually, with the information you've given us, we can get Simon Hoffman without you. Unless somehow word gets to Simon Hoffman and alerts him that his health, well-being, and freedom are best served by forgetting this job and disappearing into the ether. Somehow? You want Hoffman, you need me. You want me? You include Bobby. My thoughts exactly. Bobby's not in, and neither are we. Pleasure almost doing business with you. So you really cool off the deal with Mac then, eh? Thanks. Yeah. He had some demands that we were unwilling to meet. Like what? He wanted you to be in on it. We said no. Why didn't you tell me about it? To say what? He took me fishing into soccer games in between charming people out of their life savings and running from the cops. My mum met him when he first came to Australia. Probably on the lamb even then. At least he knew a good woman when he saw one. My sixth birthday party, he promised to pick up the cake and the ice cream. So I'm waiting. Seven of my best mates waiting with me. Hungry as all get out. He never shows. No cake, no ice cream, no dad. Well, the next day he comes around. Not to apologise, he never did do that. Just long enough to pack a couple of bags and uh, then he was gone. It's time for good. And it was good too, because then my mum met my pop. Well, step pop, I guess I should say. Just a good, honest Aussie bloke. So Mac really did us a favour leaving when he did. And you never saw Mac again? No, actually I did. Not long after I joined the FBI, Mac tracked me down. 
so I met him. And I liked him. He was funny, charming, great storyteller. So we started to get together every now and then. Ball game here, dinner there. I don't know. Baby steps, I suppose, to some sort of relationship. I thought he changed. What happened? Well, you see, Mac was looking for work, so I helped him get a job. Legitimate job with a good friend of mine. Yeah, well, two months later, Mac cleaned the guy out. So Mac disappears, my friend loses a bundle, I lose a friend. Well, you know what they say. Con me once, shame on you. Con me twice, shame on me. And that is the last time I saw Dad. Well, no worries, mate. It's history. <laughs> <laughs> so Garrett's really OK with us uh, losing this chance to get Hoffman? Well, he's not exactly organising a parade, but he backed us. I want to get Simon Hoffman. Yeah, so do I, Bobby. But you tell Garrett and Mac. Deal's on. I'm in. All right. Things you might need on the outside. So, you're still a Red Sox fan? I'm a Yankees fan. Yankees? But you love the Red Sox. Now I love the Yankees. Well, anyway, good to see you, son. I'm not your son. You're not my father. This isn't a family reunion. You do your job, I do mine. And when it's over, we never see each other again, and I live happily ever after. I was afraid he might be bitter. Thank you for these fine accommodations. Palatial compared to where I was staying. You won't get lonely. We've got agents keeping your company around the clock. All right, let's bring Mac up to speed. The explosives expert for Simon Hoffman's jewelry heist job has been picked up an old warrant by the DCPD. And we've done our part. Now you need to get yourself hired in that position. Which means I have to make contact with my once and future compadre, Harvey Phillips. Hoffman never does a job without him. Harvey hangs out at Vitelli's restaurant at least three nights a week, including tonight. He eats dinner at the bar. He's partial to the shrimp scampi loaded with garlic. I suggest you bring breath mints. Your attention to detail is impressive. Nothing gets by us. A fact you might want to keep in mind. Then you also probably know that Harvey's paranoid about technology. There's no way I can wear a wire without him picking up on it. I'll have to go and clean. You go and clean, but you won't go in alone. Could you move a little to your left? Perfect. You can see him? Yep. He just ordered a club soda. He seemed more the uh, 64 Cabernet type to me. Our friend Harvey has arrived. He's ordering a glass of wine. The house Chardonnay. Mm, quite the connoisseur. And shrimp scampi. Heavy on the garlic. No surprise there. Mac. Hey, hey, Harvey. How you doing? Okay. Good, good. You make contact. How come I haven't seen you around much lately? Well, I've been keeping busy. Laying low, trying to go straight. <laughs> no kidding. Harvey says, no kidding. Max telling Harvey he's an insurance agent now. Hmm. Harvey says, exciting. Max says something about not as much as you think. Thought I could. Could what? Could what? I can't see. The bartender's in the way. Uh, you might want to control the neck contortions. Bartender's gone. Harvey says, uh, excellent choice. The pen, something. 
And Max says spicy. Any arrabbiata. Spicy pasta. <laughs> Max says um, it's the only way to legally spice up his life. Uh, Harvey says something about looking at some of the ways. And Max says, maybe I should. Max good. Like father, like son. And he tells you when the phone rings. Or the doorbell, or if someone calls my name. He's kind of like my ears. Impressive. You two make a formidable team. And a lovely couple. As do you and that young G-man. Jack and I work well together. That too. But it seems to me there's something more there. We're just friends. Co-workers. <laughs> May I give you a little piece of advice? Never con a con man. Jack, care to join us for a game of cards? It'll help pass the time. So we're going over the meat again. It's merely a formality. Harvey wants to meet my new explosives assistant, you. Stressing about it only make that crick in your neck worse. Come on, I'll even let you deal. I bet you get that crick from the pillow you're using. I didn't say a word. Let's just play cards. I was wondering if you two would mind telling me a little bit about Bobby. Strange thing to ask, I know. What's my son like? Seems I should know things like his favorite food, what team he'd be rooting for in the playoffs, his hopes, dreams. Maybe you should have this conversation with him? I would, if I thought there'd be any chance of him answering me. I've missed a great deal. Made a good many mistakes. Yes, it takes a little longer for some of us to realize things like that. By helping him with his job, maybe he'll see that I'm worth another chance. You're good. You almost had me caught. I am good. Especially when I'm telling the truth. Gang's all here. Looking well, gentlemen? Hey, Mac. Sit down, you guys. This is my assistant, Jack. Demolition expert extraordinaire. I taught him each and everything he knows, but that's a given. So, Mac says you're pretty good with C4. Mac's right. So how many pounds do you think it's going to take to do this little job we're talking about? Well, the kind of situation we're in, I'd whoa, say... Whoa. Mac, why don't you just let your friend here answer the question? What kind of wall? How thick? Jack says, what kind of wall? How thick? Two foot concrete. How's that for precise? Four ounces will draw the kind of attention you don't want. Three and a half ounces, that'll get you through the wall with minimal disturbance. But you're still gonna have to be in and out of that pretty quick. It's not like dropping a pin. forward to doing business with you, Jack. Now there's something I gotta warn you about Simon Hoffman. He doesn't give us any set time. When he says move, we move. Tell me when, I'll be there. All right. I'm Army too. Where'd you get your training? Fort Irwin. No kidding. I got a buddy there. Marty Hershey. You know, like the chocolate bar? Top demo instructor. It's like a legend or something. You know him, right? There was no Marty Hershey I knew of. The only legend at Fort Irwin was Jim Jenkins, a 22-year veteran. You're right. 
There is no Marty Hershey. Didn't have to set him up like that, Harvey. I gave you my word. Relax. It's business. Jack says, I wouldn't have trusted Mac either if I were you. That makes two of us. Here's the plan. Harvey's already running out the shop right here next to where the gold is stashed. We'll blow up the wall, lines up directly with the safe right here. We get the gold, load it into the trunk of the car, and we're out of there. What happens after you get the gold? We contact Hoffman. He'll tell us where to meet him. He'll check the gold, pay us for our efforts. He'll be ready to transfer it into another car and be on his way. But of course, you'll stop him before he gets too far. We'll need you to put a tracking device on the car you're going to use to transfer the gold from the jewelers. I'll do my best. That's not good enough. We need it to happen. Then it'll happen. You've still got that crick in your neck. Yeah, one minute it's fine, the next minute it's driving me nuts. Where does it hurt? On the long muscle down here? Just sort of all over. Here? Well, a little higher, but I don't know, it's kind of this whole side. Do you mind? All right, I think you can help. I accept. Here? I don't know, that, that feels pretty good, though. Sorry. Oh, no, no, it's it's good. It, it hurts in that really good sort of way. <clears throat> oh, that feels a lot better. You got a great touch. Thanks. Um, I'm really hungry. How about you? I could eat. Great. I love nights like this. When I was 10, Dad and I got caught in the rain coming from the market. We used bags to cover our heads. When we got home, we were soaked. But our heads were as dry as a bone. <laughs> Loved walking in the rain ever since. Is everything okay? Yeah, sorry. I just don't think that pizza's settling in too well. I don't think pizzas were invented to settle to wrap. <laughs> Thanks. I had fun. Yeah, me too. Well, I better get going. It was very minor, minimal damage. It was an arrhythmia, which means the heart wasn't beating at a regular pace. He said that his neck was bothering him on and off. Is that related? An arrhythmia can manifest itself in that way, yes. What happens now? He should be able to return to his regular schedule in a couple of weeks, but he will have to be on antiarrhythmic medication. Can we see him? Yeah. Hey, welcome to my humble abode. Downright Spartan, if you ask me. You really should do something to fix the place up a bit. What are you trying to do? Set the world record for youngest man to have a heart attack? I thought I'd give it a whirl. You scared me to death. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I forgive you this time if you promise not to do it again. Scout's honor. So, 
Now that you've lost one of your key players, namely me, what's going to happen to our little undercover operation? It... It continues as planned, only without you. To plant someone else in your place at this late juncture, it would only arouse Harvey's suspicions. Are you saying I'm irreplaceable? <laughs> We're gonna have to rely on Mac. Farting thought, I. Eh? We'll just tighten a leash. And give the tight chain a couple of good yanks. Enough business talk. You rest. We'll come back later. Take care. Still asleep. It's quite a night, eh? Yeah, it has been. How you doing? Fine. How about you? Yeah, ever better. What happened to Jack? It makes you think. Yeah, it does. Yeah, about life, friends. Time. Those moments you want to hold on to forever. And the ones you wish you could change. But you can't. Because they're gone. So, all you can do is make sure to not let the next moment go by because it might be the last chance to... To what? To take a step toward making the way things are into the way you wish they were. That's a fascinating story. I'm not sure if I believe it, but I'm not sure I do either. <laughs> Bathroom's free for uh, whoever wants it. Good morning. Um, I'll be my guest, Miles. I could use another cup of coffee. Heaven knows you could use a shower, Mac. You know, I think I'm starting to like Mac better than I like you. I'm crushed. Here, I got it. I'm uh, pouring myself a cup anyway. Thanks. I appreciate it. I think the Orioles have a shot this year. Oh, miracles have happened. Not holding my breath. What do you care for anyway? You're a Red Sox fan. And you're a Yankees fan. How'd that happen? I like Don Mattingly. I like the pinstripes. I like the stadium. It's a great stadium, I'll give you that. Yeah. Well, I mean, Boston's got a pretty good stadium, too. I mean, you know, I love the Green Monster. How can you even talk of building a new stadium? It's treason. No, I can't argue with you there. Losing Fenway would be a travesty. Not as big a travesty as the Red Sox selling Babe Ruth to the Yankees. Here we go. Curse of the Bambino. <laughs> Come on. The team's never been the same since. Come on. You can't blame a decades-old trade for Boston not winning the World Series. Can and do. <laughs> but uh, hope springs eternal. And... Uh, Miracles can happen, as you say. feeling? <sighs> bored, huh? Is there a sign for bored out of your mind? <laughs> I think that means you're on the mend. 
Yeah, the doctors seem to think so. I've been in raids, I've been in takedowns, I've been shot. I knew it was dangerous, and I knew there was always a possibility that I might not make it out of there, but... It's not like I'm not scared in those situations. This was different. This wasn't some bad guy hiding behind a door with a gun. This was my own heart out of control, out of my control. All my training, everything I've learned in order to protect myself at that moment, man, nothing. I did learn something. What's that? Your life doesn't flash before your eyes. <laughs> I guess it kind of makes you think, though, about things that you've been doing. Maybe even more about things that you haven't been doing. You know? Yeah. I think I do know. Allie. Hi. Is this a bad time? I brought the pajamas you wanted from home. Oh, thanks. Uh, Allie, this is Sue. Sue, Allie. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Allie's an old friend from Wisconsin, and uh, Sue's a friend from work. Oh, that's nice. So, were these the ones? Because I brought these ones too, I wasn't sure. Uh, either, both are fine. Okay. Allie's mom and my mom are good friends, and Allie's mom told Allie about what happened. My mom is Jack's biggest fan, ever since our first date, sophomore year. You've known each other since high school? Actually, since fifth grade. Mrs. Buford's class. Let's not go down the Mrs. Buford road. I'm a sick man. Mrs. Buford was not one of Jack's biggest fans. She just didn't appreciate my exuberance for participating in her class. I never could get the raising your hand before you talk thing down. Jackson Samuel Hudson, you just earned yourself another detention. Oh. I'm sorry for that side trip down memory lane. Uh, excuse me, my pager. It's Bobby Hoffman called Mac in. The game's in play. I'm sorry. It was really nice meeting you, but I have to go. Okay. Will I see you again? I hope so. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk to you later. She seems nice. Yeah, she is. Thanks to Matt planting the tracking device for not making the trip alone. Harvey's turning south on 11th. I need somebody parallel south on 10th. He's between N and O streets. Yep, we're on it. On it south on 10th. I'm parallel south on 13th, Tara. 12th runs one way north. Half the city's one way. U turn, U turn, everybody. Harvey's now going north on 11th. Okay, turning west on M. We'll cut over. Parallel north. On 12. Bobby, now he's turning east on M. He's coming straight at you. Perfect. Right, oh, no, just that casual, mate. Here they come. Do you think Harvey knows someone was following? I'm hoping he was just taking precautions. Hold on. Now he's turning south on Tyler. Coming around back east on M. Parallel on 7. Stop. He's landed, guys. Looks like a warehouse on Tyler between Massachusetts Avenue and K Street. Yeah, okay, look, we're about three blocks back, but, uh... Hit a bit of traffic. On! Oh, I'm two blocks away. Hit it. So, what do you say, Simon? Simon says... Well done. Yeah.
it! Mr. Hoffman, I presume. Pleasure. Hands on your head. Turn around. Everyone present in the counter for? All yours. What about Mark? Well, surprise, surprise. Guess who's left the building? Say that I'm surprised, but I'm not. So I won't. Lose Mac, gain Hoffman. It's a pretty good trade off, if you ask me. Even the assistant U.S. attorney's got to agree with that. He already has. Win win for everyone, I guess. Too many people? Two hours past visiting? What's wrong with this picture? Is she always this cheery? A pure ray of sunshine, aren't you, Violet? <laughs> you can stop right now with that lip of yours. This is me in a good mood. Your friends don't vamoose. This ray of sunshine's gonna burn somebody. Yeah, right, I run away. Hey. Sue, can you stay for a minute? No, -uh. that means you too. You want to talk? Save it for tomorrow. This man needs rest, not jab. Are my lips flapping and no sounds coming out of what? Actually, I didn't hear a thing. I think Jack looks a lot better today, don't you? A lot better. Have you met his friend, Allie? Actually, I met her a few years ago, back when Jack was seeing her. Seeing her? Yeah, it's been an on-again, off-again kind of thing. I know that they were quite serious at one point, but she hasn't been around for several years. She's an advertising executive. She lives in New York, and they actually know each other from high school. High school? Why didn't you say anything about her before? Because it's been off again for quite some time, so... Is it on again? I don't know. Omaha. You bored to death. That's pretty good. How'd you find me? Superior cunning intelligence. All that and the tracking device that I sewed into the suitcase that I gave you. So this was your plan all along, eh? Set us up with Hoffman and then take off? No, it wasn't. But uh, when the opportunity presented itself, I uh, panicked and ran. I suppose that's possible. Guess I'll never know, will I? Bob, here's how it's gonna go. I'll bring you in, I'll give you a cover story, how this is all part of the plan so that Hoffman didn't know that you gave him up. The other option is, you're a bad guy and I'm FBI and we go from there, it's your choice. What are you saying? If I were to walk away, you'd shoot me? Fugitive in flight, you gotta do something. was a con, you're good. Maybe we're more alike than we thought. No, we're not. I do want to change. Now, maybe that's difficult for you to consider, even harder to accept, especially with what I've done. But it remains the truth. I'm sorry for leaving you when you were six. I've made some bad choices in my life. None that even come close to that. Look, if you're trying to soften me up so that I let you go, forget it. I don't want to run anymore. Because if I run, I can't see you. Here we go. Hey! Hey! hey. Good man, Well, well. You're gonna be a 
dead man clapping if you don't knock it off. Well, you'd think a guy could slip in unnoticed. Not in those clothes. Yeah, we do have a dress code here. What, you think I'm here to work? No, I am milking this thing for every minute of sick time I've got coming. You just missed us. I tried to convince him to go straight home after the hospital, but he wasn't having it. You better force this guy to take it easy. Don't worry. I'm chaining him to the couch for the next few days. If he tries to do too much, he's going to have to answer to me. Whoa! What did he do to negotiate a deal like that? Paying gold bullion? We haven't agreed on terms yet, but I'm planning on coming out ahead on the deal. Good, because he clearly doesn't deserve it on his own merit. You guys might not be done your verbal sparring, but I'm double parked, so I'll meet you out front. Thanks. I don't think we don't know what you're doing. Sure, have a heart attack, engage the old girlfriend's sympathy. It's an old act, but I see you're not above using it. <laughs> the couple of things that I came to pick up, uh, you think you could give me a hand out with them? Sue, about Allie, there's something I want to explain. Explain? Why would you want to explain anything? Well, because I want to, that's all. Um, Allie was my first real girlfriend. And, uh, well, through the years, there's just a lot of history between us. And what about now? I don't know. I hope it works out the way you want it to. Your elevator's here. Okay, let's get one thing clear. We're nothing alike. Because if I were like you, I wouldn't be here. I'm glad you are. So, when I get out of here, you and I have to take in an Orioles game. I told you the Orioles are terrible. By the time I get out, they may improve. Miracles happen. Besides, it's not about the game. It's more of a father-son thing. Whoa, let's just do this one step at a time, right? For now, you're still a con, I'm still FBI. <laughs> well, that's a start. Nice day. Yeah. yeah. See, I never figured. <laughs> I should give the tie to you, shouldn't I? That's good. Yeah. Tell you're all nuts. <laughs> <laughs>